It's going to click. Got it here. There we go. All right. And then this would be the bare minimum representation of this. Um, so if, uh, of this raccoon. So if we only saw this rectangle and this oval and the title in the gallery said raccoon, we'd be like, mm, that's pretty cool. And so the next thing I see is taking a look at where the nose sits on this oval. And if I didn't have the reference photo, I might intuitively put the nose kind of in the center. I'm just thinking about a raccoon. Oh, the nose is in the middle of the face on top and the tip of the snout. But we're taking a look at where this nose, just a circle, sits in reference to this oval that we did. And so we see that it sits quite low down. I'm going to get rid of this crow. Apologies for the crow. So it sits quite low down on that reference photo. And so I'm going to now show you what that would look like if I was doing it like this with you. That was our first rectangle. So I'm just drawing a rectangle on my sheet to show the amount of space that I have to work in. Then I looked at the size of the head as it takes up space in that rectangle. And so I reproduced that on my sheet approximately. You can see I'm just doing real loose sketchy lines. Then I took a look at where does the nose sit on that face inside this particular image. And it's very low down, not in the center. So then I just create that here. So that's basically how this technique works. We'll build a little more on this warm up exercise so that when we get to the portrait, we have lots of time to take it slow. And so now I'm taking a look at where the snout is. The nose is sitting on a snout right about here, but because of the markings, the white markings on this snout, we see that there's a triangulated image here around that circle that we did with the nose. And so I'm going to reproduce what I'm saying here. There's a triangle around the snout. And it doesn't have to be an exact reproduction. It's just a way to take a look at how we can break down this quite complex raccoon face into something very simple. And so now we have this snout area and the center of the head and the nose on the tip of the snout. And then I start to look at the relationships of things now that we have the sort of main, main parts. Might not be able to see, but we want to anchor our head here. And I can see that there's a bit of body right around here. And right around here, I can see a bit of the raccoon body. So I'm going to anchor my head and put a bit of a body right there towards the bottom of the page, towards the bottom of that oval, just to anchor the head of the raccoon. Now, some people can really... When they draw something like this, they may start at the top and they do all the details and they work their way down for a realistic drawing. Um, I don't tend to work that way. I tend to build the drawing as I go. And so this is a very, very um, classic animation technique as well. Um, started sort of with the Disney artists way back in the day where they would build these geometric shapes and then build the form on top of it. So then the next, after we've had this triangle here for the snout, I'm going to take a look at the relationship of the marking around the snout, around the eyes. And I can see how towards the tip of that triangle that I did here, there's this beautiful curve that comes around that marking and around that marking. So I'm just going around that marking and around that marking. And again, this is not about creating a beautiful picture. It is simply about us finding the geometric shapes to warm up um, for our portrait exercise. And so what I followed was these, this beautiful curve around those 
eyes and now I can see where I place my eyes. If I didn't have the reference photo, I might place the eyes a bit too far apart, the nose too high up. But I'm looking at just the relationship of this curved space here that I did beside the snout. And I see a circular eye right towards that tip of the triangle there in the center. Just a couple of circles right up towards that top of that curve towards the center. And again, so far, all it is is ovals and a triangle, these curvy lines. And then what else could we do in terms of guidelines to really build this raccoon face? And I can see these adorable curved triangles here on top of the head. And they're tucked in right towards the upper corner of that frame that we did. And so let's put a couple of curved triangles here on either side of the original oval. And we can see that that becomes the ears of the raccoon. And on the inside of that, we can see another curve shape bit of an oval inside the ear because we can see the inside of the ear. So I'm just going to recreate just a couple of oval shapes inside the ear. So basically all this was was just to get us in the room as people get settled, get us attached a little bit to the paper, and just to introduce the concept of geometric shapes. So if someone was looking at this, they can start to understand, I think that might be a raccoon and what gives it away, because it could be like a teddy bear or something, but it is this curve, this band here. And then if we were doing a full portrait of this raccoon, we would then go to the next step now, which we would do to build form. So that is the raccoon warm up exercise. Thanks, Kat, that was awesome. Yeah, just a real simple way to get us in the room because I know that it takes some people to some time to get down and settled in. So we're going to be using this in um, our portrait drawing. So do does everyone have this particular reference photo? If you haven't grabbed it yet, it is. What do you got? You got some different photos. You've got this one and I believe this one was sent as well. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to set up my paper. So now, so those that had came in during this, this was us just warming up, starting to introduce the concept of geometric shapes, which we are going to use to build form, and then we'll use light and shadow after that. So I'm going to take a fresh sheet of paper here, and everyone can take a fresh sheet of paper. Everyone's just flipping over their pages for a awesome. sec. If everyone, if anyone needs any more paper, just let me know. The reference image is week 10 lab at the top. You can go there and just download it to your device. Time to get your time. Take your time to set up. Actually, what I'm gonna do is do a bigger image. See it. I'm obviously very high tech with my washi tape and paper. And hello, Jason. <laughs> there, bigger image. And so um, Susan can let me know when folks are settled. How's everyone? I think everyone seems pretty much ready to go, maybe. 30 more seconds just to make sure everyone, does anybody here need to borrow a China marker? A China marker? There we go. I need to borrow one. Make sure you hand these ones back so if anyone forgets them on future days, I have some. Anybody else? Everybody else is good. Probably peel the ones I've just handed down a little bit. Do the China marker. Do the China marker. Yeah, for those that haven't used the China marker before, if you are, have the, have you used China marker before in the class? Yeah, we've been using them a little oh, okay, bit. Great. 
Oh, yeah. Everyone has struggled through how hard it is to uh, hold them down. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I do encourage you to say that you, I'm going to sacrifice one of my many China markers here. So if you do um, want to, if you peel and you're trying to unfold more China marker wax and it goes awry like this, and sometimes you get way too big of a top like that, and then you break that off to make it more manageable, keep all these little broken pieces. These are gold, like they're really great for shading. So I, I always keep like a little bin of them because inevitably when you're un peeling off, sometimes the China marker is very, it misbehaves and it exposes too much. And so um, you start to get very quickly these tiny little ones, but keep all the little bits because they're really great for shading. And I'll, sh I'll show you that in a bit. All right, so we are settling in and we have we can take our time. Uh, this is, um, my brother uses this a lot um, in his work um, because, because he has some time blindness. So I bought myself a time timer. If anybody ever has seen these before, they're fantastic. And instead of you looking at your clock and saying, oh my goodness, I only have 40 minutes left and the time is ticking down, you just see this visual red disappear. Fantastic. I will send Susan a link to it. It's changed my life. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us through step by step drawing this quite complex um, portrait, which is quite exciting. And um, the premise is that we are going to build the geometric shapes as we did in the warm up exercise first. And then we're going to take a look at and here is an example I, where I want you, we're going to pay attention to where things overlap. So as flesh overlaps, as eyelids overlap, there will be some shading that we will discuss to really get sort of a natural shading if we can. This is also um, a daring one where a hand appears in this image. So this is, uh, we were going to simplify the hand, but it's quite exciting to use, to have an image with a hand in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to put your sheet into portrait mode, which you may have already, which is up like this, as opposed to the landscape mode. I never understand like the hamburger and hot dog, which direction those go, but landscape and portrait. So we're going to do an image this way. And then depending how big you're, you want to draw, I want you to do that initial frame. Draw the frame in which you are going to draw just so you tell your brain it's a real brain gym exercise it's about How the big. same size cats working as well so not i see some people are drawing really small frames mm -hmm. good size big, yeah nice big frame we're going to draw a nice and loose yeah. and big minimum size would be eight and a half by 11 minimum so <laughs> go bigger yeah <laughs> you got a big sheet go big it is just it's a natural thing when we're we want to draw a bit smaller but um yeah, it's nice to go big. My easel is very, there we go. Okay. Oh my gosh, sorry if I'm making anybody nauseous by my moving my camera. I'm literally using my dad's old easel from 1949, Norway. So, and it's a bit wobbly. <laughs> All right. So now we have, I'm going to remove this so we don't get distracted by this eye for a bit. And I'll come back to it. Now we have this image. It's a lovely image. I love the simplicity of the image. But what I want to take a look at first, like we did with the raccoon, is how big the oval of the head is. And so I'm going to take a look at this size here. And what I want you to do is take a crayon, if you can. Or if you're using your China marker, go light on your hand. And I'm just taking a look at where does this oval sit on this sheet? And it leans back over towards our right here. And I'm just going to sketch in, really relax, just an oval. Don't worry about getting this correct. We're not going for perfect reproduction. But what we're going to do is just loosen up and create an oval that's angled a little bit to the right and up a little bit 
on that sheet, but it takes up quite a big amount of space. And I'm just looking at this oval of the head here. And what I want you to do is go really loose on this. I'm going to turn the light on so I get a little bit more light from here. And you can see how it angles a little bit, just like we have this original reference photo. And again, using the crayons, put away any erasers. The erasers become a bit of um, a crutch. We don't need erasers. We're building guidelines and we are building this form. The next thing that I see is where does this almost try a, a rectangle or tube the neck? Uh, come off this oval and it angles back like this. So we are just establishing approximately where the model's neck is, but I'm considering it more like a cylinder. And it angles here underneath. I'm just gonna let people know, um, this is a good spot to use the crayon. So if you're using, just cause it's lighter, see so okay, if you start in a lighter color, then you go over the top of the darker color and it's easier if you say you wanna move something just to make your life a little bit easier. Yes, yeah. And if you do um, use just the China marker, go quite light with your hand for the, but usually I will um, use the crayon or a different color first just to get those guidelines in. Also, this process becomes quite quick when you get used to this process. So if you were doing this portrait, you might do this part really quick, but we'll go step by step here. So we have done the oval of the head, angle back the neck, and now let's anchor where those shoulders are and take a look at how straight that line can be. It's like a triangle coming right off here. I'm just really breaking down this image to the bare minimum shapes. And so what I want to do is kind of take a look at, can I reproduce that right here? I'm just going across. So this will be the model's left shoulder and the right shoulder. And then we've got, all we've got so far is an oval. Those necklines coming straight down towards the corner of the sheet. And then just another triangle. And if I was looking at this, I could actually interpret this as a, a head of a human and that this that may, may angling down their shoulder a bit. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is lock in approximately where those two hands are. And all we need to do is do a bit of an oval coming off on the side here, up from the bottom of the frame, and it meets this triangle tip right here. So we're starting to look at the relationships of shapes as they interact with each other. And so what I see is the hands are placed right on the side of that oval and meets that triangle. So that means I'm gonna go up here and just approximately scoop down and might come off your sheet out of your frame, which mine does, and that's totally okay. We're just blocking in as much as we can here. So many guidelines will help, like a lot of guidelines will then help you just build the form on top of it. It becomes an easier way to um, create the image. And now we have, basically, we have the character in the space. It's taking up the frame similar to what I see here. So now the next thing I want to do is take a look at the midline of this face. How is it coming? It's the relationship of it in relationship to the other shapes that we have done. And what helps then is the midline of the face is going to be right in the center of that oval. It angles back a little bit because he's tipping his head over, but I can see how it comes down and it's this relationship right here that becomes interesting. So it's an approximation. If I'm angling my head as I look at this oval, I want to go into the center of that oval, not this way. I'm doing the midline of the face 
And I'm just gonna do a guideline going straight down that oval. But what we want to do is make sure that the midline of the face is tipped with that oval. And this might change as we go, but we are just building up all these blocks so that we can really get in and find the form in a bit. So then here, classic art school is taking a look at where eyes, noses, and mouths sit on a head. And so what I want to do is start to compare these lines. What's the relationship of all these facial parts in terms of where they land on the sheet? So what I can see is if I take my hand to the tip of the top of the head, bottom of the eye, it is pretty much the same as from the bottom of the chin to the bottom of the eye. So I'm gonna do a halfway point on that oval and I'm going to see, okay, where's the halfway point on my oval? Approximately right here. And then I'm gonna angle that halfway point because the oval, the head is angled a little bit. So now we're looking at just the midline of the face and the midline where the eyes will land. And it's so fascinating to, to compare. That is the same, the bottom of the eye, top of the head, bottom of the eye to the chin are the same lengths. So that means just placing those halfway really helps. I wanna see what's the relationship between the bottom of the nose and the chin. That's about where the eyebrows are. So that's, I'm going to go a little bit. It's more if I have, this is the bottom of the eyes. The bottom of the nose is up. It's more than, uh, it's up higher than halfway. So I'm going to just angle that a bit right there. So halfway would be too low. So all I did was here's the eye bottom of the eye line. And then just taking a look at where the bottom of the nose is. It's a little bit up on that hole. Sorry if it sounds complex, but we're just blocking in um, and being quite daring with our ability to try to get this portrait done. One more thing I'm gonna do, take a look at where's the lip line, where the two lips meet. So I'm just looking at the relationship of facial parts. And so if this is the bottom of the nose, that lip line is up a bit from the chin, approximately right here. This might change as we build the facial structure. But basically what this shows you as we get the eye line, the nose line and the mouth line is how much of the face is actually towards the bottom of the skull. And what happens sometimes when you see portraits, there's sometimes there's something off with them. It's because not enough brain cavity is given to the portrait. And it's a really interesting thing. So it's amazing how much of the upper part of the face really needs to take up that sort of brain cavity space. It's quite interesting as you start to look at the relationships of things. So now we have Let's do some ovals for where the eyes land. And so we got the bottom of the eye line here. And so I'm just gonna do a couple of ovals approximately where the eyes land. Just approximately. I'm just looking at the reference photo and just blocking in these lines. I'm gonna go a bit darker here. And I'm leaving, I'm not gonna be erasing any of these guidelines. The guidelines are telling me where we're gonna find the form. Next thing I want to do is I'm gonna to wanna to find the nose tip. So this particular model has quite a round nose tip. And for a while, it'll look a little bit like a robot or clown nose. But what I wanna do is just do a circle right there midline where the nose sits just right above that nose line. We did a bottom of the nose line. So I'm gonna do a circle where that fleshy nose tip sits.
and then approximately where the mouth is going to sit. So this will be sort of an elongated oval right there where we have the lip line and it goes a little bit past the nose. So just an approximate oval here we have placed where we want that mouth. And now that this drawing could go in any direction. It could go into some weird robot thing. It could go into all sorts of strange directions. And now that we have that, um, we can then take a look at where do the ears sit on this? And I can see that the bottom of the eye line, which we did right here, brings us to the top of that ear. And so that means I can go to the bottom of the eye line and just do a scoop right about here. Just a curve to indicate approximately where that ear is gonna go. And then we can scoot over to the other side and put an approximation where that ear is gonna go because the ears kind of go right at the bottom of the eye and down towards almost, yeah, to the bottom of the nose line. So they kind of fit in with this area right here. So you're really looking at the relationships of things on the page. And before we go into the next thing of finding more form and really starting to draw this portrait, um, I want to block in a little bit of the hairline as well. So the hairline angles in a little bit on either side of the head. And then just towards the top of the head blocks in a little bit like so. So I'm just very sketchy. We might change this as we go. Is angling in the side of the hair and then just where the, for lack of a better word, bangs would start right about there. So we're just blocking in a hairline. We almost have enough information now to get to that next stage of really finding the form. One last thing I want to do is where are those eyebrows approximately above our eyes? And so I'll just they're quite high because he's raising his eyebrows. So I'll just put in an approximation right about here. So now we have, we started with the oval angled because he's angling his head. We blocked in the neck and the shoulders. And we blocked in approximately where the hands sit. And then we started to look at the relationships of things on the sheet as we built approximately where we're gonna put all our facial features. So this is now where we um, hand, go over to our China marker. And again, if you are tempted to use an eraser, resist the temptation, because we really wanna just go for it. So let's take a look now at the first, let's anchor our eyes. That will be a good way to just build the form on, from that. So I have my China marker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at just this beautiful upper eyelid right here, this angle here, just that upper eyelid on either side. So if I take a look at where my guidelines are and I think, okay, they're sitting actually pretty well um, where I want them. And I'm going to take my China marker and I'm going to be brave and I'm going to do an upper eyelid line, which is basically just a nice curve along those oval guidelines right there. And this is where it starts to get serious. Now we are starting to, whoops, uh, get to decide this is where these facial parts will go. And the next thing I want to do is take a look at where the iris is. So usually um, when we do sort of drawing exercise, the iris is looking right at us. In this fabulous photo, this model is looking towards up to his left. And so what I'm gonna do is just block in where the irises are. They're towards the top of the eye and towards the person's left. They're looking up 
and to the left. Their left. And then one of the things I see, and I want to block it in now, is the highlights, that light in the eye. You can see here the little white dot here, that shine in the eye that makes the eye look alive. And so I'm going to block that in. It's actually a curved rectangle. It might be hard for you to see, but on your reference photo, you can kind of see this angled highlight right here by the iris. It goes across the iris. I'm going to bring my camera closer so you can see what I'm doing here. So you can see that curved little highlight there. I'm putting that in just to remind myself to keep that kind of white in order to make it look shiny when we get there. Let's block in some more. We've got this nice little eyelid line that is runs parallel to our first eyelid line. So let's do a parallel line right on that first eyelid line that we did. Sorry, that my teeth look a little dark. All right. And then inside the eye, which is hard to see, it might be easier in the actual photo. It's a, the um, model has quite a dark colored eye. Right in the inside of that iris, let's do a pupil. So that would be just a circle inside that circle that we did for the iris. Oops. And so we have a circle in a circle. Now that we're here, let's block in an approximation of that brow. We have those guidelines for the brow and let's just block these in almost like these Nike shapes or something. And you can see how this beautiful curve comes around the eye. And if we're really looking at the relationships of those as we go around, and that is just arching that brow above the eye and just angling it around the eye on our outer, outer corner. Those are important relationships. And then this beautiful curve, this is where I really pay attention to this curve, comes down from the brow and creates a nose bridge. So you can see how we can just sketchy lines. I'm just doing broken lines, which I call like sketchy lines and just sketching in going with my China marker. I've got the brow and now I'm curving that down in the inner corner of the eye to create that nose bridge. Let's go down now towards the nose. So we come down from this brow down towards the nose. And what I want to do, we have the tip of the nose here, is do these nostrils, the holes in the nose where the air goes in. And I'm gonna do towards the bottom of our no circle that we did, a couple of sideways raindrops around that circle that we did. And I'm gonna bring that closer so you can see, but what those are are just the nostrils of this model's nose. And so you can see how the guideline kind of tells you what to do there. And it's just a couple of kind of sideways raindrops just to approximate nostrils. And then on either side of those, we have this beautiful fleshy nose right there we're gonna block in a couple of brackets in order to flesh out that nose. So we're building this face using all the relationships of things. And now we're starting to find the form. We'll ignore the nose ring because that's just gonna complicate things for now. But what I want to do now is to move down to the mouth. So we're blocking this in and the mouth is closed 
And I want to see how wide is that mouth? It is wider than the nose, about right here. So I'm going to do a little dot on the outer corners of the mouth where it meets the cheeks. And then I'm just going to draw the lip line. And when you see the lip line, it angles up just ever so slightly, dips down, angles up ever so slightly, and dips down, almost like a very shallow letter M. So I'm going to angle up ever so slightly, dip down at the center, ever so slightly up and down. And then I'm going to color that in quite dark. And so now we have the lip line. And that's where the two lips meet. And then we'll get into shading that in a bit. But what I want to do is just do a gentle lip line above that, the upper lip. And that's basically the same shape. It just angles up a little bit higher, dips down in the center under the nose, angles up a little bit higher, and dips down in the center. And we're just going to focus on the upper lip for now. Let's not outline the lower lip for now. And I'll talk about the reason for that in a second. And then we have this, I believe it's called the philtrum, that dip, that little letter U that some people have underneath the nose. Not everyone has it, but underneath the nose, there is this U shape right there. And as, and as you can see how the brow comes around, comes down to the nose bridge, almost pushes everything down. I love the relationship of facial structures where everything goes down. And so now this U is pushing down the, that lip line in a sense, it's really cool. So now we have the facial features. Let's quickly block in the head. And so um, we have our very round kind of um, guidelines, but this um, model has a much slimmer face. So I'm now I'm gonna take a look at where's the distance between the outer eye and the temple on this model skull. So I'll take a look at about here. I'm gonna get aggressive with putting down a line to approximate where the model's temple is on either side of the eye. And then that way I can then scoot up and say, do I like the way my guideline is? Does that need to be higher? No, I'm gonna be brave and just connect those lines together. And as we're here, so now we've got the top of the head, we've got the temples, and what I want to do is take a look at my guidelines and say, can I block in that hair? I'll do that. I'm going to go over my guideline and just approximate that. doesn't have to be exact. We are just sketching this portrait, blocking it in, and things can change over time. And then the next thing to do, so that was a way to look at that relationship to decide that distance, is to now take a look at where's the chin? Do I like that? Okay, the chin is down here. I'll anchor that. And then I'm going to be brave and go out a little bit because you can see how this scoots out to the cheekbone, angles in a bit down by the mouth and then connects to the chin. So the original guideline was oval, but now we're creating a bit of cheekbone here by chiseling in the side of the face towards the mouth. You can do the same on the other side. We're angling out, chiseling in, and then bringing that in. So it was a way to initially have the oval head. And then now we are chiseling in, we're sculpting the head a little bit and we still see those guidelines and that's totally okay. As we're there, we can just block in that ear again. We, I like where it sits at the bottom of that eye line and I'm just, putting a bit of an ear shape, which is just kind of like this squiggly line. We don't have time to do anatomically correct ears, but what I'm doing is just a bit of a peanut shape on either side to get a bit of an earlobe and the top of the ear there. But I used the guideline area that I had. And 
And then since we're now we have blocked in everything, we have we're finding the form. Let's just go down to the neck. And where I have that guideline, I have that neckline is pretty good in terms of where the photo tells me that the neck is. So I'm going to say, okay, this is where the neck is. And then I'm going to take a look at this turtleneck around this neckline. And I'm just going to do a really organic curved shape underneath the chin to approximate a turtleneck. And so drawing is just illusion. So you don't need to be this perfect kind of reproduction if you only have a few minutes. If you're drawing storyboards, for example, you can get right in there and just do these really abstract shapes to approximate clothes and shapes. So what we did was right at the bottom of the chin, we had our guidelines for the neck. And then I just extended this shape around that neck to give an illusion of a turtleneck. And then again, we also don't have very much time in terms of doing the hands, but what we can do is approximate that by just angling in that tip of that finger a little bit and angling out. And what we're gonna do is not worry about the hands at this point because of our timeline. But if you wanted to spend time on this, basically you can just block in these Figure, fingers and see what you can do. But for now, we're just letting this figure lean against this shape that could be a hand, it could be like some kind of object that they're leaning to, but we'll just leave that there. But it was a good way to anchor this angle. All right, so in the few minutes we have left, we have now built the geometric shapes, we found the form. Let's do a bit of shading. So that Pat, we if we need to go a few minutes over, that's fine. We okay, can awesome. probably go to like uh, 1030 and still everyone can fly awesome. out at the okay. last minute. We have okay. 15 minutes or something. Okay, great. Yeah. So let's, let's go up to the eye because the eyes, if we get the eyes, then the rest of it can be quite abstract. And so what I want to do is take a look at where the really get into that upper eye line and make that as dark as you can. So I'm going over that upper eye line again. Let's get really brave with that one. And then on the inner corner of the eye, let's do a little letter C and then a backward C on the other side. So we're just putting a bit of a tear duct in as this eye line comes down and puts a bit of a tear duct right there. And all it is is just a little semicircle. And then very slight hand. We want to get that lower eyelid um, in. But I want you to go very light with your hand. The upper eyelid is darker than the lower eyelid. And so what I want to do is just do a nice gentle curve across that eye towards the bottom. And I'm going to a, uh, doing a light hand. I'm going from the outer corner of the eye and then up towards the tear duct. Same here, outer corner of the eye, up towards the tear duct. So it's just a little bit lighter. I want that upper eyelid darker, the lower eyelid a bit lighter. And then once we have that, let's color in that pupil as dark as you possibly can. And that's just that circle in the circle there in the iris. I'm coloring in that pupil with my China marker as dark as I possibly can. That's a really central piece. And then around that, remember we have that highlight kind of angle across that iris, but around that, I want you to do a nice light gray tone in the eye for now. Just a nice light gray tone to color in that iris and I'll explain why we're going light on that one. And then now let's pull down a shadow. So now this is where I'm just gonna um, not look at the reference as much as just giving you the principles of shading an eye. I'm gonna pull down a shadow onto the eyeball from that upper eyelid. And what I'm doing is just doing a gray tone 
below that eyelid line that we did and pulling it right down to the eyeball. And then where the iris tucks in underneath the eyeball, I want you to go really dark with that shadow. So this is where you, on the iris, you go super dark towards underneath that eyelid and then let that shadow fade in the iris. So what I mean by that is that we colored in the iris really nice gray tone. Then we pulled a shadow down from that upper eyelid. And then where the iris itself tucks in underneath the the eyelid, I want to go almost black towards the top of it and then let that sh um, shadow just fade towards the bottom so that the lower part of the iris gets a little bit of light. And so that way now we have these eyes nice and shaded. And what I like to pay attention to is with the eyes, when we want to do the shadow in the outer and inner corner, what we're paying attention to is the eye is not almond, it's actually a ball right underneath here. Right underneath here, there's an eyeball. So the shadow in the inner and outer corner can be a bit spherical. As I scoop down, I ignore that tear duct. I'm going to bring it closer so you can see what I'm talking about. But what I'm doing is making a spherical shadow in the inner and outer corner of the eye to really get that rounded shadow in the eyeball there. It's because the eye, we want it to look like a sphere that is tucked in a bunch in a bunch of flesh. So now we have the eyes, let's just quickly block in the rest of the face with our remaining time. So we have the eyebrows. So what I'm gonna do is just sketchy lines along the action line that the, those hairs are growing. So they're growing from the inside towards the outside of the face. And so they go up and curve along that guideline. Just doing some sketchy lines, so just to create a brow. We'll move down and now we're just gonna shade a little bit in the inner corner of the eye as the brow comes down and we're building a nose bridge. And all I'm doing is just doing a light touch of shading along that nose bridge. China marker is hard to rub, not like, and like charcoal is easier, but sometimes you can get your like messy fingers just to make that a little bit softer. We'll go down to the nose and around, let's put a little bit of shadow around the nostrils to block that in a bit. And then right at the tip of the nose, we do get this spherical shadow just like with the eye there's an eyeball underneath there so the shadow is a sphere the eye nose tip or sorry the nose tip is a circle and so i'm just gently running my china marker in a circle at the nose tip to create that kind of shadow there and you can see how the nose bridge meets those outer nostrils you can see how these beautiful shapes are interacting and then now let's move down to the mouth. And what we see here is that the upper um, lip is in shadow and the lower lip is capturing light. So let's gray out that upper lip. And then ignore the lower lip, but let's put in that shadow that happens under the upper lip. So it makes for a fleshier looking mouth when someone's seeing it from a distance. So by ignoring that lower lip, but just doing the shadow that happens on the model's chin, we get more of a fleshy mouth. And then the upper lip, we can shade in, it can get a little bit darker towards the lip line. And then that way the mouth from a distance looks fleshier as the audience is looking at it.
And as we move down, let's put a bit of shadow just here where the chin meets the left side of the neck. So I'm putting my China marker kind of flat on its side and just rubbing underneath the neck there and putting in a bit of gray tone onto the neck underneath that chin. And then as the chin meets the neck, I push a little bit harder to create a bit more shadow right there. So first it's a gray tone of shadow onto the neck, kind of ignoring that turtleneck and then pushing a little bit harder where that chin meets. And then just a little bit more that we can do in our remaining time here is just if we wanted to, we can quickly lock in the hair and you can do that by these zigzaggy lines because the model has short hair. So I'm just being aggressive and doing these up and down, up and down, up and down zigzaggy lines. And so if we had lots of time, we would complete this drawing and make it look quite realistic. But we didn't have that much time. But what I want to quickly do is show you what I would do if we had time with that broken china marker. So a broken piece of china marker, approximately a centimeter thick, can become, if you lay it on its side, a really powerful drawing tool for those that want to work on this drawing on their own time. You can scoop it around. Whoops. You can scoop it around the um, model's face. You can block in underneath the eye. You can do this beautiful shading and all it is is a centimeter long little bit piece of china marker that you can run along where you see the shading. And it becomes this really easy way to block in um, the drawing. And you can see how that creates this really interesting way to shade. And then we would keep going. So basically, that was the introduction to portrait drawing in a <laughs> very short time. It was a lot of information, but the premise was break it down to the bare minimum shapes initially. And then as you build up the form, take a look at where those form the relationships of items on the face, and then start to take a look at, you can even squint your eyes, where are the shadows? and sort of build up those shadows, paying attention to what is spherical and what is relating to the other as things overlap. So there you go. That was extremely complex. Very brave of you to join today. <laughs> Thank you, Kat. That was a uh, fantastic. I did record it. So those of you who felt awesome. like you missed some steps, you can now go back and practice it. And they look really good. And so thank you. I'll send you some uh, images from the class. You can see how it went afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> really nice seeing you. Thanks yeah. again. You're, and you're uh, more yeah. than welcome. Thanks, okay. Everybody. And I will share any, uh, if I have some videos of portrait drawing, I'll send those to you in case somebody wants a link. <laughs> and hear you if you want to say bye. Thank you, class. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. Okay. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye. Mm-hmm.